Kind of the traditional way we've looked at that is to say that in the past, it's been fairly easy to predict what our kids' futures were going to be like, right? We had a fairly good sense of what the world was going to look like, what their roles were going to be in their jobs and their professions, whatever else. I don't think that's the case right now. I think it's very difficult to, to paint the picture of what our kids' future looks like. Um, but I do think that there are certain characteristics of that future that are pretty clear. It's going to be much more collaborative, I think. Um, the whole idea of intellectual property, copyright, plagiarism, all those things are, are coming under some, I think, heavy push right now in terms of our understanding of what those things are in a world where everything is freely shared and collaboratively created. I mean, it just becomes much, much messier in terms of identifying all, those, all of those different things. So I do think that it's going to be much, much more of a collaborative space where my kids are going to be working with people from different cultures. They're going to be working with them synchronously, meaning real time, but from different physical spaces, different geographic locations. Um, and that they're going to have to be much more flexible and kind of responsive to a lot of the, the differences that those environments create, obviously. Um, so that's, I, I think that's one thing. Um, again, I don't think they're going to be using much paper. I think that the way that we have organized things in the past, the taxonomies that we have used as, as we have grown up, are, are not going to work for them uh, in the digital world and that they're going to have to create their own organizational schemes. There may be, and I don't want to throw literacy around too loosely here, but there may be an organizational literacy almost that kind of you know, helps them uh, make good decisions about the content that they find, but then also helps them understand how they you know, save it, how they organize it, where they put it. Uh, we don't have file cabinets and file folders any longer. And even though we've kind of used that metaphor when we've, you know, used, using computers, this is, this is different from that even because there, uh, there is a sharing piece of this, a, again, a collaborative piece of this that makes it very different. Um, you know, I, just, I don't save anything on my hard drive any longer. I save everything online where other people can access it. So if I find it, it's shared and there's the potential that other people can engage in that particular thing. So that's the type of thing that I'm talking about. Um, less paper, um, less doing work on their own. They're going to be doing work with others. They're going to be doing it digitally. They're going to be doing it real time. Um, it's going to be much faster for them, I think. Uh, they're going to have to be very flexible in terms of the roles that they play. In fact, a lot of people are saying that, you know, um, everybody's going to be a freelancer, you know, in the future, um, depending on what their potential, their, their specific knowledge, skills, or passions are, or whatever else. So um, I just think that my kids are going to succeed more fully in their future if they, the, the sooner that they begin to understand some of these changes that are happening in, in terms of information and in terms of collaboration and transparency and all of those things. And they're not getting that right now um, very much, at least in, uh, in the school system. I think it's really difficult to know what the school system is going to look like in 20 years, 15 years. I think the one thing that's happening right now that gives us a clue is that there are many, many alternatives that are arising to traditional public schools. Uh, Florida Virtual High School has 50,000 kids enrolled. Um, there are thousands of charter schools that are being created. The state of Ohio is hemorrhaging public school students at this point. They're going other places uh, to try to get educated. Um, and I, I do think that, it, at least you know, in the states, NCLB has a lot to do with this, and, and that until we kind of get over that hump, um, we're going to be looking, you know, I think, pretty squarely at a system that's just going to be becoming more and more irrelevant until we you know, figure out how to change it. That being said, I think globally there are our models, there are our, our systems and countries that are beginning to get it and are beginning to implement these types of technologies and these types of pedagogical shifts in ways that make sense and that are creating real change in a systemic way. Uh, Finland, Scotland, New Zealand, uh, they all have a more, much more progressive, kind of much more um, uh, nuanced understanding of, of how these technologies just change the nature of learning, how they change the game. So they're responding in some ways that I think are really interesting. Again, creating more collaborative spaces, um, making, connecting teachers and kids um, across the country helping them use tools to publish and to start conversations like that. Um, one of the biggest kind of conundrums in my network 
one of the things we struggle with all the time, is how do you, what's the answer to that question? How do we get schools to move? How do we get schools to change? Some people say it's not going to happen without leadership, that it's not going to happen without people at the top who have a vision and an understanding of some of these shifts and can really, if not model, at least allow for their teachers and their educators to experiment with kind of a net of support underneath them, you know, because they want to encourage that kind of, of, of you know, teaching and, and, and um, uh, creativity and whatever else. Other people say, well, we, we can't wait for the leaders to get the vision and, and to put into place the environment for teachers to change teachers just have to change and that at some point there'll be some tipping point that will occur when you know there'll be enough teachers who will be clamoring and saying look we have to start doing things differently we have to make these these types of changes um, and I'm not sure what the answer to that is I don't think that at least the K through 12 system that my kids are in not the K through 12 not the school but the system that they operate in I don't think that system can sustain these types of changes over the long term um, unless it really re-envisions what its role is in my kid's life. Um, and, and that comes down to conversations not only about pedagogy, but about culture, about our own personal learning, again, about the way we do our own business as teachers, as learners, right? That we have to begin to model, we have to begin to, to really understand these things on a personal level before any systemic change is going to take place. And then at the end of the day, I think there has to be some type of national leadership, national like uh, impetus to really, you know, engage in some of these conversations. But it's going to take a long time. I mean, there's no question about it. It's not going to happen overnight. One of the Canadian teachers who I really admire, Clarence Fisher, I think he uses a really interesting metaphor for his classroom. He says, we have to start thinking of classrooms as having, having thin walls, thinly walled classrooms, instead of thickly walled classrooms. I don't know if that's the right adjective or not. But the idea is, is that you know, we have to be able to break through the walls and get outside of our spaces. Um, I don't think, I, personally, I think there will always be a role for physical space. Um, but what we do in that physical space is going to have to be different, I think. Um, we're going to have to, again, be, be the types of educators, I think, that co-learn a lot with our students. We're going to have to model much more of our own learn learning for them. We're going to have to empower them to learn a lot of the things that we feel are important for them to learn in the context of what their passions are. That we can do that. We can enable them to do that now. Um, it's not as easy. It's much messier. It's not as linear. You know, there's, it, it, it's not as easy to do as simply to, to deliver a K through 12 curriculum. But I think physical space and social, being social in physical space is absolutely crucial. I think having teachers in the room who can model and who can, can you know, care for kids, have an ethic of care for kids in the classroom is absolutely crucial. I don't see that ever going away. But the curriculum is where we really have to start thinking hard um, about, you know, what is imperative or what can't, what, what do we have to do in this physical space? Um, and, and again, physical space learning, once we become adults, once my kids become adults, I don't think is going to be much of their future. I don't think they're going to do a lot of their learning in physical space. In fact, I don't know if I'm hoping or, or just maybe suggesting that my, my kids may not go to college in a physical space, in a traditional way. Um, they may be able to kind of produce their own curriculum, create their own curriculum. In fact, if I've done my job well, they will be able to create their own curriculum around the things that they're passionate about. Um, and maybe a part of that will be meeting in physical space. But, um, you know, we have to make my, you know, Alan November, who I'm sure you've heard of, um, you know, basically he, he puts it as um, classrooms should be like media centers to the world. You know, that they should be transparent, that they should be connected, that they, that the things that we do in classrooms should be be available for other people outside of the classroom to see in measure, you know, depending on what, what grade we're talking about and whatever else, but that the way we conceive of learning in a physical space has to be really, really different from the way we conceive it now.